Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, When the Unrighteous Are Promoted. When the Unrighteous Are Promoted. When I took a look at scripture, I noticed that the types of individuals who have been promoted over the years fit just what this particular scripture that I'm about to read showcases. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, why in establishments are people who fit 1 Corinthians 6, 9 being promoted? Let me say that again. Why are people being promoted who fit 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Okay? This promotion, if you will, that occurs in workplaces all across our land and around the world is a red flag to the Christian to leave. You are not to continue to sit under individuals who are now being promoted that fit 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Children of darkness can sit under children of darkness and learn as much as they want to learn and be abused and used, and that's on them. But the child of God is not to continue or to take on a new role seated under someone who does not mind bragging about their dastardly deeds. They may think that they're just having a conversation with some people who are laid back. They may think that it's cool because some of these folks up in here do what I do. And besides, don't judge me. And I work for a free-spirited company that just embraces all things, everybody. And so you just shut your mouth and let me spout off about all of my unrighteousness. The child of God, the one who is turning his or her life around, who is no longer going to walk the types of walks that lead him or her astray is not going to do well in an establishment where it is encouraged to corrupt your good manners. Oh, you're going to make me curse today, says somebody. Oh, you going, you, you say what? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to, and then they go and they do some passive aggressive things because, well, <laughs> you decided to stay there. You decided to take the abuses. You decided that, well, the money's so good, I'll put up with until you can't. Because see, when I'm on that path toward changing my life around, come on, I can't be seated around anybody and everybody. I can't work for anybody and everybody. Don't encourage me to stay where the monkey is on that person's back that will eventually jump off of their back and come on mine. Because see, if you listen to a person long enough, complain and go off and I don't like and you people and all of that long enough, some of you all, you already know because you've done it, you are going to go there and they're going to have to terminate you because you're not going to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Come on, some of you all, I can see it as spirit jumping up, throwing stuff, ripping cords out, 
going upside somebody's head. No, no, no. We're not going to encourage that sort of thing. That's why I'm telling you, you need to leave. You know that that deceiver just got promoted. You know that that fornicator just got promoted. You know that that idolater is seated in front of you bragging about his or her title. You know that that adulterer who cheats, creeps, lies, steals just got more money, more money, and more money. You know that the effeminate is seated before you and can't stand you, you, your gender, and everything else concerning you. But yet, oh well, I love this money. Mm, God even warned us about that. You're not supposed to be loving money because to love money is what? The root of all evil. You got that right. People who abuse themselves. Look, he every, every time I turn around, he's showing up with scratches. He got bruises. He got cuts. He got markings. He, you know, even if it is a pretty decoration all over his arms, I mean, what is triggering him now? He feels like he's got to keep doing something to his body or she got to keep doing something to her body. You see, oh, we know the thief is in the camp and the thief just got promoted. Mm, interesting. Wasn't he supposed to be written up? Wasn't she supposed to be terminated a long time ago? You see, oh, that one who wanted all of, you know, what we had. Oh, you wanted our title. You wanted to drive the nice cars. You wanted the, you know, all of these things. And now huh, you did all sorts of shady things to get these things. And now they're going to promote you again. Wow. The drunk. Showing up drunk, people making excuses. He cries. He says he loves his job. He wants his job and all that. And they keep giving him the pass and they keep giving him the pass. And now everybody got to dance around the drunk. If it was me, some people say doing all of this stuff, I would never get promoted. Exactly. But some individuals are in with the darkness. It's not God. It's the darkness. The, the father of lies, his minions, there's certain connections and affiliations. They charm the right one. They slept with the right one. Ooh, are we telling it? <laughs> you see, and she was awfully pretty and she moved up pretty quick. Mm, look at who's protecting her. That man who's lustful, that man who's going through change of life. Yeah, he going to continue to do some things to keep her around because in the end, he's thinking about what can she do for me if she hasn't already. Oh, some of you all, you already see how this story's going to play out. You see, because when people are desperate and I got bills to pay, it's interesting how quick they can lay on their backs. Y'all didn't want that truth, but we telling it today. Sip your tea. And we're telling it today. You see, God, he is not to be mocked or played with or you think you getting away with something because you're not. When we looked at some of these individuals over the years, we said to ourselves, why, oh, why, oh, Lord, is this person getting promoted? I mean, we played fair. We did the right thing. We, you know, and on and on. And the Lord says some of those establishments, it wasn't about your gender. It wasn't about your race. It wasn't your sexual identity. It wasn't anything but you are not to be in that atmosphere and so when you got mad enough about the fact that somebody else was promoted guess what you did you finally let that job go that's what i wanted you to do from the start because you weren't supposed to be there oh child of light <laughs> come on somebody needs to shout on this i know you don't want to receive the truth today but you got to because for some individuals there is this musical chairs when it comes to jobs you know, and I could put my hand up, you know, you, you, you go into these atmospheres because somebody told you, you know, Hey, you know, I really could use your help and you go, okay, I'm going to help you out. Then you go and you find out, Oh my goodness, this is crazy. But did you consult with the Lord about it before you showed up? Or yeah, I did consult the Lord about it, but yeah, but you didn't wait. You hadn't heard from him. You, you had not heard from him. Well, I thought it was a sign when I saw some things, you know, that were personal, some things that were familiar. Aren't we supposed to be guarded when it comes to what's familiar? Because a lot of times we go into atmospheres looking for the familiar and then saying to ourselves, it's okay 
just so that we can feel good about our decision. Notice I said I, I said we, I didn't say anything about God, you see. And so I find though that when God is on a move, sometimes he's putting you in settings where no, it's not familiar, it's uncomfortable. And come again, God, did you really tell me to be here? Yeah, because I need you to learn some things. And it's a temporary season that you're going to learn some things because you're going to take what you've learned and use them for the next job, for your promotion. Hallelujah. (laughs) You know, sometimes it's the hard knocks of life, right? Where you got to go through these different things in order to become the manager, You got to go through all of these things in order to become the business owner. You have to go through all of these things to become the investor. This is a new one for me lately. Oh, so I'm actually working for some of these groups to eventually do what? You got it to invest in them. Because sometimes you can just buy whatever stock you want to buy, buy whatever mutual funds you want to buy, but you don't know anything about that company. But if you're working there, oh, you know a whole lot more than the rest of the folks in the boardroom. See, I went there and I didn't just go there to visit and sit down and talk with someone, but I actually worked for them. And here's why it's not working, the current systems. And here's why we're losing a bunch of money, you see. And I said to myself, I should be charging some people (laughs) for taking on these jobs and learning a thing or two behind the scenes. You see, like uh, that, that channel, there's a channel out there where the guy, he's always giving away stuff and people think he's just giving away his own money and taking his own money and doing all these cool things with it. But he got hooked up and got connected to some various companies and these companies give him his share of money plus whatever they want him to do. And I got to thinking, I said, you know, I go into these atmospheres and I'm learning all these different things about these personality types. I'm learning a lot about the various systems and processes that they come up with. I learn about their relationships. I learn about how they, what their management styles are, how they communicate with workers. And I'm saying all this knowledge, all this information, all this intel that I have, come on, how do I turn that into some money? (laughs) You see, because there is this vision that some individuals have when they go into an establishment, when they build a business. And initially, it seems like there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong. But then over time, desperate times call for desperate measures. Now the ugly starts showing up and people who were once a part of the team and were building up the process and investing in the process and giving over their ideas and seated among the men and the women and telling them what they could do in order to improve process. Well, at some point, That light goes out, the ideas, you know, the things that you can do to make things better. All of that goes away because God doesn't want you to continue to feed the beast, if you will. Hmm. He doesn't want you to continue to pay attention to all of what's happening because you don't know all of what's happening. Because they did something different now. What you were accustomed to receiving, what you were used to hearing, what you typically do on a day-to-day basis, somebody changed the game. And now they are promoted, they are recognized, they get the praise and honor that you should have gotten. And now you walking around with your head held down and you got an attitude and you don't like some folk. And God says, well, rather than be that difficult one, I'm just going to move you out. And sometimes when you're not ready to move out, there's some negative things that happen to you that force you out. Okay, because I'm seeing in the spiritual realm that some of you all your expiration date is coming pretty quickly in terms of leaving an establishment. And starting your own business, you know, it, it's happening very quickly because you only got so much time on this planet to get the desires of your heart met. You kept going to the Lord and you kept going to the Lord, praying and 
fasting and asking him to do some things and he's telling you what to do and then you get an attitude and you don't even want to do it and you don't want to put your your own uh business together you rather just keep feeding the cycle feeding the cycle can i tell you that there is a season for small businesses right now I don't know if any of you all knew that, but I'm here to tell you, having gone through my share of experiences and of course, walking with the one true God, there is a season for small businesses right now. And if you want to be the one that is propelling your business, or if you want to be the one that's starting your business, then you've got to let some people, places and things go. And yes, there is risk involved. But God, he provides you with the tools when he is at work. Now, if you're at work, it's on a, it's a struggle bus. If you're trying to do something without God and the people of God, it's a struggle bus. Because every successful business has a team, has a group, has um, plans to delegate responsibilities. And yes, there is money and more money and more money involved. One thing I have heard from a lot of the unsuccessful businesses is what they don't want to pay for. Well, you need to start picking and choosing what you're willing to put your money in on because uh, all of this attitude about spending money, well, you know, it goes back to the old adage, right? In order to make money, you got to spend money. So promotion is happening and it's not just about somebody going from worker to manager, but promotions also happening where someone is no longer worker or manager, but now they are a business owner or they are an entrepreneur or they are a freelancer. You see, promotion is happening and don't let other people tell you anything different promotion is happening in various ways even when it comes to relationships she was once the girlfriend but that man is going to make her his wife hallelujah and somebody can shout on that you see promotion comes in various ways with the one true god but what hurts is when someone sees that the unrighteous that cheating creeping lying stealing crazy making person now you got the nerve to wear somebody's ring mm oh, you got the nerve to sit up there and now you're the business owner. Ugh, all the dirt that you did and now you got a lot of nerve sitting up here managing different people. Oh, you know how you are. You know that you lie, you steal, you ghetto act and you whatever else and yet you got what you got, you see. People see this sort of thing and they question God. Some people are very angry. Some people got tears in their eyes. Some people are covetous, jealous about this sort of thing. I'm here to tell you, stop doing that to yourself and to other people, you know, talking all the negative talk to your girlfriends, your boyfriends, whoever. Oh, you know, she got, she got this, she got that. And I don't understand. I mean, after all these good things that I've done for different people and then she gonna get this, it just doesn't make sense. You know, just stop with it because you could get yours. If you would be that righteous, come on, that righteous child before the one true God, as opposed to the unrighteous. Because we are God's children, right? Some of you all, you said, I'm a child of God. Well, act like a child of God and stop with the silly stuff. You know, he should, he say, she say, everybody say, you know, snapping fingers, twirling necks, acting crazy at the workplace or elsewhere. Come on now. Lord Jesus, some people, they act one way in the church setting and a whole nother way when they get home. Come on. And then they talk about I'm blessed and highly favored. I can't tell because the way you acting right now is telling me something different. God wants to put his who Lord Jesus, he wants to put his blessings upon someone. But they're not receiving the blessings because they're too busy looking at the unrighteous. And no matter how much we say to redirect your mind off of the abuser who got promoted off of the mind, off of the um, the, the idolater and the adulterer and, and, the, and the deceiver and the fornicator. And we try to take your mind off of those things by encouraging you and asking you, what do you want? And what do you hope to accomplish? You want to keep going back there talking about those folks. Can we just stop? And let's move ahead and let's move on. Lord Jesus. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Somebody says, I need, I need God. I I can't do this any longer by myself. 
I'm willing to spend the money. I'm willing to put the time in. I'm willing to go broke for a while in order to get my dream accomplished. I'm willing to say yes and rather th- rather than no. I'm I'm willing to stop arguing every time somebody's just trying to help me. I'm willing to do what's right. I'm willing to do the honest thing. I don't want to be the one that's having to give over my mind, body, and spirit to someone once again in order to get some attention. We got some individuals who, they're entertainers. They've got their share of platforms and so forth, and they want to go to the next level. But they are already aware that there's a lot of shady stuff that goes on in the entertainment industry and some are willing to do it do whatever is asked of them but the child of god that's not for you it's not for you to sit up there and do the types of things that you will regret for the rest of your life just because you want to let the world know just how talented and great you are because people around you said how talented and great you are but Those people are not going to be in the boardroom, in the backseat of the car or the limo. They're not going to be there with you when you sign a contract on a deal that requires you to also give up a lot of yourself. And they're not going to be willing to do what you are willing to do for it. And so eventually your support network that said that you were so talented and skilled and great are going to fall off because they realize that there's a change in you on the way up and then eventually on the way down. And they don't want to be a part of whatever it is that you got yourself mixed up in. Not that long ago, I listened to an audio message of a former drug dealer and he was breaking it down in terms of all of the different things that he did in order to move up in the game, including stealing from fellow drug dealers. And then once he decided after repeatedly going to jail that, okay, I'm going to get my act together and allow the, 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 the Lord um, to motivate and to promote and all this other stuff, then he saw a change. Okay. He saw a change. So it's unfortunate that sometimes people got to do things in their own mind that are dirty and ugly and awful and get it all out their system, if you will, for them to finally turn around and go, okay, this isn't working for me. I mean, he could have made his life a little bit easier a long time ago if he would have just said no to the drug game. There were relatives who told me about the pimp game. And they didn't, of course, go into a lot of detail, but they did let me know that there were those who pretty much ran women like they ran a business, okay? And that every woman had a title and every woman was expected to fulfill her duties and anyone who didn't, they were terminated and in some cases, unfortunately, lost their lives. Now, If you're trying to get out of any type of dark, dirty, ugly situation, it would make sense to not keep the people around that encouraged you to be a part of the game. What happened with some of these individuals, whether they were in the drug game or the pimp game, was that they kept these people around. And when they kept these people around, it was either kill or be killed. When they kept some of these people around, some of them... I can't even interview for this uh, channel because they're six feet deep in their graves. Okay. Didn't even make it to 50 years old. Some of these individuals, they had their share of personality disorders. And this is something that people overlook. You're looking at these people and you say that they got promoted. They got increased. They got blessed or whatever else you want to say about them. But. Upon closer inspection, there's a personality disorder that actually is beneficial to those who control the puppet. And they know how to play on that personality disorder to get that individual to continue to perform in the way that they want. Yeah, that's how dirty and dark this thing can get. 
They didn't want you because you got too much sense about you. They didn't want you because you're medicated and you got your stuff under control. But they wanted the person who's out of whack. And then what they can do is navigate that person's life according to the way they want it. And some folks have some very sophisticated tools in order to play on somebody's mind in such a way that, okay, now you're going to dance by the beat of my drum. At the snap of a finger, you see, God sees, God knows, and God will let, unfortunately, some of these things happen because that one is not a child of light anyway. That one, unfortunately, was called by the demons, if you will, to be the opposing force, the opponent, the bad guy or the bad girl. In this war that we're in. Where ultimately the demonic is destroyed. And God and the people of God reign supreme. But there's a long while for some of those things according to Revelation to take place. We don't know the specific day or hour. But at the same time though. For now we know that the Lord wants us to draw near to him. Because to draw near to him, that's where the protection is. To draw near to him, that's where the ideas are. To draw near to him, that's where you get the understanding as to why some people are being promoted while others are being (laughs) demoted. And sometimes you do have to take a demotion because... The timing is not right for the promotion. The monies are not there. Um, Some folks are actually being promoted. Title, yes, but the money, though, isn't anything worth talking about. They got some of these folks that I described um, from the scriptures on a bargain basement discount. And I have a book that I am working on right now. I will tell you that this bargain basement discount, if you will, that's going on, it's unfortunate that they're so desperate and so hungry for this job. Oh, I just need this job. Oh, I'm going to have this title. Oh, I got all of these, you know, the special treats to go along with the job, you know, and it's pretty much pennies being thrown into a bucket, those little extra benefits that they call benefits. And so people who aren't used to making any real money, they're glad to take a job that you would not take for that amount of money per hour. But they would because they never experienced that type of money before. You see, you may have experienced 50 to 100 plus thousand dollars annually. They, 30,000 is like, oh my goodness, I just won the lottery. (laughs) So they're willing to have Um, all of these responsibilities dumped on them and then once they think about it they go they got me exactly they got you for a bargain basement discount and you aren't you so excited about it now of course not you aren't and you're not posting a bunch of stuff about that job like you used to bragging and telling everybody what God supposedly done for you when it was nothing more than a company that was looking for some cheap managers okay that we're willing to take whatever you see when you've been out there in the hood or out there on the street for a while when you've been on that struggle when you just want to feel good about yourself it's unfortunate but there are people out there that play into that and then you thinking that you got something special when all you are unfortunately is a modern day slave that is slaving and slaving some more like your ancestors did for pennies on a dollar. That is a hard truth for some individuals. But if you were that one that was educated and did your research, we're not talking about everybody, but we're talking about certain individuals. If you were doing your research, you would know that you don't take those ridiculous hourly wages. They're laughable just to say I got a job you see some folks you're still holding out because you know you know what they were doing they were going to use 
everything associated with the dreaded C in order to get people at a cheaper rate, a cheaper hourly rate, a cheaper salary. So for some of you all, you sitting up there and you're thinking that that person should have never gotten, you know, they don't have the education, they don't have the skill set. Yeah, but they did have one thing that you forgot about. They were willing to receive a laughable hourly rate or salary just because they wanted a title so bad. And they're regretting it because when they started doing the research after they signed the paperwork, they realized, oh, my goodness, I really, really undercut myself. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So this unrighteous individual who doesn't want to listen to counsel This unrighteous individual that some folks are jealous of because he or she got promoted and they don't even know all the details of the promotion. He or she who continues to be sinful and encourages other people in meetings all across our land to co-sign on their foolishness is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Got to bring it all back to the spiritual this is not a person who's going to inherit the kingdom of God this is not a person that you should be seated under this is not a person that you should be helping with getting the desires of their heart okay God has not called you to align yourself in a subordinate role under this sort of leadership They are perpetually sinning. They're perpetually bragging about the sin. They are doing the types of things that you know that they will throw you under the bus. If they're stealing from the company and they're teaching you how to steal from the company, they will throw you under the bus. They will get rid of you. If you get too close to trouble and that trouble might cost them their job they will throw you under the bus I don't know who I'm talking to but you think you're getting away with something and you're not because they're notating it and then when Porsche comes to shove they're going to say shove him out the door I don't know what you're talking about I've never told him to do that I don't know I'm sorry no mm -mm. um you, you know because they know how to put on an act too the unrighteous knows how to put on an act they mirror who they see around them and they will take on that personality of whoever they're trying to impress so let's just say for instance we all are seated in a room and we all have a leader that we do not like and we find that there is a lot that is very very wrong with this leader okay but this leader wants to win friends and may have picked up that many of us do not like that leader so now In order to keep some people close, especially those that he or she feels is going to make him or her a lot of money, they're going to drop some information, some information to help some people win the game, so to speak. So that means here's what I know with regard to products and services and sales. I can't share everything with the rest of the team, but I'm going to share it with you and you're going to make me lots of money. Okay. And I'm going to make you lots of money. And so there you have it. Now you got some folks that are working behind the scenes with information that the rest of those who don't like that leader are not privy to. God is not going to permit you to be a part of any game where there's some lying, stealing and cheating going on. And once you see the writing on the wall, you're not to remain in that atmosphere. Or if you see the writing on the wall, you're supposed to report it. And we know that some individuals are too cowardly to do anything. They barely want to say, God bless you, let alone go to HR or people or 
you know, ethics or any of it. They're too chicken. You see. And some individuals, they don't want to do any of it because they don't want to be in the radar. They want to fly under the radar. Because sometimes there are some companies that, oh, well, if you know this information, hmm, I'm going to start looking a little closer at you to see if you've been doing some things that are shady. And if they don't want future issues, they may just get rid of everybody who knows something about that shady individual. And they can strategically do that. I've seen it with my own eyes. So these sorts of things in order to protect themselves from various legalities and so forth. So these sorts of things behind the scenes while people are talking about who got promoted and who got demoted and, you know, all of this other business, you've got to be the individual that recognizes when it's your time to go. Okay. I'm speaking to many of you about this. Because it may not be your season today and it may not be your season tomorrow, but sooner or later, there may be a season where you're skipped over. You're not promoted. You worked really hard. You thought you were going to get more money. You thought you were going to get another opportunity within the same organization. You thought that you were going to get a better title and nothing happens. But meanwhile, you look around and the deceiver and the fornicator, and the idolater, and the adulterer, and the effeminate, and the abuser, and the thief, and the covetous one, and the drunkard, and the reviler, and the extortioner, they're all getting their promotion. This message was to answer the question, why? And once again, we know the type of world that we live in. We know that God has allowed the demonic to reign for a certain amount of time. We know that some of these individuals that I called out, we know that they got friends. They're a part of their various sorors and fraternity groups and occult groups. And some of them just got interests that are similar to people who can promote them. And so, hey, you like this and I like that. And yeah, you're my kind of person. Let's go. You see? And God sees, but no worries. Because just as one is promoted, one will also be demoted. Some of the things that I've seen over the years when these sorts of people have increased very rapidly up the ranks were, number one, they fell very far down very quickly. Oh, I thought you were going to be in that position for five, ten plus years. Nope. Mm -mm. Company ends up being sold. Um, the supervisor that used to protect them, used to promote them, no longer with the company. Um, uh, clients drop off. Sorry, can't keep your position. Um, some of these individuals were demoted. Some of these individuals were... Um, were called into the office one day, laid off. Uh, some of these individuals ended up, unfortunately, losing family members that were close to them. Not that this is tied to any of it, but, you know, that does mess with your mind. And so you don't perform as well as you should. And so they eventually quit. Um, and then, of course, there were those who, unfortunately, were investigated for a number of things um, that were unethical, you see. So a lot of the negativity does show up. So don't be that one that sits up there and says, she got all of that, knowing, you know, all of those opportunities, blessings, whatever you call them. Um, and, you know, she got her house, she got her car, she got all this other stuff. Yeah, but a lot of times, if you stay connected to certain people in these various workplaces, you find out that a lot of negativity um, happens with them. Okay. Maybe when you were once there, this is what happened, you know, um, all this good stuff. But then you may have not touched base in a while. And now you find out that all these negative things have happened. OK, it's not something that we run around the house and talk about. Woo, yeah, uh huh. she got what she deserved or he got what he deserved. No, what it is, is God showing you that 
he means what he says. I mean, you can't sit up there and talk out of two sides of your mouth. And some of these people did just that, talking about their ch children of God and they're blessed and they're highly favored and all these things. And we're like, oh, get out of here. You're sprinkling a little God because, what, you're trying to win some believers in the group or something? Get out of here. We see the foolishness. It's a game that they play, right? So for some of you all, don't be disheartened and, you know, avoid being angry at the one true God over this sort of thing. And, you know, put your jealousy, your envy, whatever you got going on there in check. Because at the end of the day, God, he, in all of these situations, teaches us a lesson. And we're supposed to hear that lesson and not be like everybody else thinking on that worldly scale. Okay look at these things from a spiritual standpoint with spiritual eyes there is something foolish in the camp yes it is the red flag it's the warning sign you got to go or you got to move to a different department or you got to start your own business or you've got to you know report somebody to hr or ethics or people and culture or something but you got to do something other than just sit there and pop popcorn and sip tea <laughs> I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thanks in advance.